we're going to do an offshoot of my faux pod series and it's going to be called the ode to series and this is the first one welcome actually i'm the rest of you can go get a snack or something i need to speak with taylor kitsch oh wait i caught the sam jones interview um that was on off camera I, I don't know what happened, but I remembered that you were one of my up and coming faves back in the like Gambit, John Carter days. I could tell you work best with other actors. You need to bounce off other actors. You need other energy in the scene. The green screen work, I don't think did you justice. You deserved a, you deserved a better movie to be Gambit in, let's be honest. But you were still solid. You still brought it. You still have that. Most likely because I foresaw a possible Curse of the Hot Dude coming on for you. Uh, the curse of the hot dude is you're good looking and you could make a lot of people a lot of money for that reason so you start being getting pigeonholed and stifled creatively and i just it i was just like oh, it's really sad if that happens to him but i was wrong and i'm sorry for that because i tell you what <laughs> i have since caught up like a joyful fun, deeply touching, kind of existential, like, it was wonderful. It was like the, the coolest rabbit hole that I needed over the last like month or so. And I alternated like interviews and projects that I'd missed over that time. A bunch of common ground. I am from a small town in Wyoming, moved to Texas and graduated from Denton High School, like Denton, Texas. I have also been homeless. I was raised in a single parent family. We're, we're both born in 1982. Like, what? So, a lot of common ground. So, I think maybe that's why I resonate with your work so much, is because I think that similar experiences yield to like a similar understanding or a similar kind of scope of the world. My favorites <laughs> are, well, but they're all good, so I can't even say that, but. Waco, um, The Normal Heart, Waco, The Normal Heart, Grand Seduction, because it's a sweet little movie about us particular, you know, maybe it's that small town, you know, understanding, but like, it, it's a particular movie about a certain type of place and people that doesn't get made very often. And I think it's really cool that you were a part of it. Um, right as you were picking up steam too. Waco is, dude, <laughs> dude, Taylor. It's not easy, but in any way to play a character to the degree, a pro, a, a, an antagonist character for that matter, to the degree that you understand how he got to be the way that he was, you understand how people fell in love with him and led, led, them, led themselves down kind of a gnarly path. That's not easy to do. And I feel like you nailed the tightly coiled like viper ready to strike and also the lost little boy and also the like commanding virile leader that he must have been and i know you're big on research i you know i learned that through the interviews and stuff like that so it really paid off true detective and the normal heart they inspired me in a way that i think every artist aspires that their work should do for other people and that's you inspired me in my personal life and you inspired me creatively. So thank you. But I, I continue to move forward. I really want to see Shadow play, but um, I'm a big Mike, Michael C. Hall fan. He has the same birthday as me, speaking of birthdays or like birth years. Um, he's February 1st and so am I, which is really... Anyway, so we... <laughs> Um, I really want to see Shadow Play. It was actually that was like the first one I wanted to dive into for some reason, but um, it's not available in my area. But that just means it's a testament to you being cool like that and working with smaller companies and not just big conglomerate corporations. So again, nicely done. Just quick side note about True Detective and the Normal Heart. I know it's controversial to be to portray a, a gay character if you yourself aren't um aren't gay but two things i would just submit that you're you're an actor for a reason it's not it's not called being it's called acting even though you do end up being the person um so there has to be a journey for the actor to partake on to, to partake of and b it's kind of 
a really rad act of allyship, in my opinion, for someone who has a, you know, probably predominantly straight fan base and straight platform to feel that they want to tell a story about a situation that maybe their whole entire audience or the majority of their audience would never see otherwise. I think that's that's something to be commended. And I know we'll get there with more representation, but I don't think Matt Bomber or Neil, Neil Patrick Harris or I don't think they would encourage any actor to turn down any role just like they didn't because they, you know, like if you're a, a gay person and you turn down a straight role, that's that's kind of unheard of, right? So I don't think it's fair to ask the same of straight people. I think you handled it well because it wasn't, it, we have to look at the intent and it was, it was handled really well. You weren't a caricature, so... Thank you. So, and just thought, just then, just on a personal note, you know, people can pretend to be whoever benefits their bottom line when they're in front of the camera and always, and you know, any type of interview or anything like that. I can always tell the pretenders from the people who are, who really are just there with their heart on their sleeve, basically, and just taught, speaking from their heart. And you seem to be a generous and grateful and humble individual that's very that takes his job seriously and that could have very easily rested on the laurels of his good looks or, you know, uh, done a thousand football movies or whatever, but you didn't. Start working with African Children's Choir like straight out of the gate. Like that usually takes, you know, which I, I don't like comparing people necessarily, but it's just impressive that at the age you were, you were just like, I want to do things that mean something to me and that, you know, benefit other people. And like that's at the heart of any good actor, I think. Um, and this I noticed a lot. For my taste, I, you know, the, some of the questions and interviews and stuff like that were a little, like, cringy, you know, but at every turn where you could have been rude or been like, okay, you know, you weren't, you're just genuine and answered the question and a little sarcasm slipped out, but that's to be expected on a press junket. I just want to stop pretending like famous people aren't people too because they are and even though they get smoke blown up their ass a lot about things with people around them that benefit from like pumping them up i don't think enough, they get enough genuine um, gratitude from people that are ultimately benefiting from their stuff their their work and their their art and that's the audience that's the that's their fans they're true like good job high five <laughs> can't wait for the next project you know so and that's how i feel I really am excited for, for the next, whatever that may be, whatever that may be for you. And um, so thank you. Thank you for all the inspiration. And uh, yeah, if I'm ever in Texas, uh, we should have a beer. And, uh, and shoot the shit. I would love that.